They need to make sure you are academically capable of doing well in medical school before they will even consider the context around everything else. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 316. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I take your non-traditional pre-med questions and answer them here on the podcast. If you have a question you want answered, go to premedhangout.com. Yes, no longer the forms, premedhangout.com. Use the topic hashtag OPM question or non-traditional question or whatever you want. We'll find the question and we'll put it here to answer. We have a great question today from a student who's in a very standard non-traditional dilemma and wants to know what to do. Before we jump in, though, I want to talk about the MCAT Minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. As this episode is coming out, we're winding down 2022 with 2023 right around the corner. That means not only is there a new application cycle coming up, but the MCAT starting in January 2023 or 2024, or 2025, whenever you're listening to this in the future, is starting. And one of the biggest questions is, how long is it going to take me to prepare for the MCAT? When can I take it? The first thing you need to know is that you're typically taking the MCAT about 18 months prior to when you are starting medical school, at least 18 months prior, ideally. And it's going to take you another three to four months on top of that to, to study for the MCAT, maybe even more as a non-traditional student who has a family like we're going to talk about today. So you need to make sure you have a plan in place. Go to blueprintmcat.com, use their free account, their free study planner tool to figure out what that plan looks like for you. Again, that's blueprintmcat.com. All right, our question today says, given that I have a husband, six medically comp uh, complex kids, and a job, how many total credits do you recommend for a do-it-yourself post -back in my situation? I'm currently enrolled for eight credits this fall, repeating Organic 1 in anticipation of Organic 2, which I, quote, need to retake, and Human Physiology, which I also, in, in <laughs> uh, very stressed capital letters, need to retake. Here's the deal with this type of question. It's impossible to answer with the details given. And let me tell you what details are needed. And then I'm gonna tell you to go to mapped.com, M-A-P-P-D.com. Use the referral code old premeds, old premeds, just all one word, old premeds, one word. Use that referral code, get three months of mapped pro for free. That will give you the ability to enter your grades, enter your activities, and then go to the chat advising feature and chat with one of our expert advisors, one of our pre-med experts, and ask this question so that they have full context to be able to help you. With that said, let me tell you the things that I immediately think about here. Number one, you emphasized need to retake both for organic two and for human physiology. Number one, physiology is not a prereq for m almost all schools. There are a few schools out there that do have it as a prereq. So do you need to retake human physiology? Probably not, depending on your school list. You may need to, if one of those schools that you're applying to has it as a prereq, but maybe not. And what is the need, right? Did you get a C minus or lower? That's usually the cutoff for need to retake. Now, as a non-traditional student, husband, six medically complex kids, and a job, medical schools don't really care about that. They need to make sure you are academically capable of doing well in medical school before they will even consider the context around everything else. And this is where grades matter, right? I often get thrown under the bus by advisors and other people for saying, oh, Dr. Gray says anyone can go to med school and grades don't matter and all this stuff. No, they matter. And then 
the context of being a non-traditional student, having six medically complex kids, having a job, having a spouse, whatever that story is for you can come into play. But if the medical school doubts your ability to do well because you are, maybe you've struggled earlier as a traditional undergrad student, and now you're sitting here as a non-traditional student thinking, how can I cut corners? That's how I read this question. Tell me what little I can do because I have all of this other stuff going on, which is, again, being a non-traditional student, it's kind of expected. You got lots of stuff going on. But the question shouldn't be, how little can I do? Right? How many total credits do you recommend? I don't know because I'm missing a lot of context. The question needs to be, how can I show academic ability? And yes, some will argue, well, that's what this person's asking. How many credits do I need to show academic ability? Great, let's answer that question. Historically, I've always said 25-ish hours. At as close to a 4.0 as possible, you're starting to show academic ability. My colleague, Dr. Scott Wright, former director of admissions at UT Southwestern, used to run the entire TMDSAS application service, had lots of contacts and, and contact with all of the individual medical schools through TMDSAS, says closer to 40 is what he has seen historically. So take that for what it's worth. I had a student on, I don't know if it was mission accepted or the pre-med years, they all kind of blur together these days, who was in Michigan, she was a, a Michigan resident, she reached out to all the Michigan schools and they would consider 20 hours kind of a reset of her GPA as a Michigan resident. So depending on where you live, this answer may vary. Reach out to some of your state schools, your local schools, whatever uh, schools are around you, schools that you want to go to, give them a brief kind of life story and say, hey, here's my plan. I'm planning on taking eight credits, 10 credits, 12 credits, 16 credits, 20 credits, 40 credits, whatever it is, assuming I get as close to a 4.0 as possible, will this quote unquote reset my GPA for you? Remember, 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 I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around this. If you watch any of my application renovation videos, premed.tv or applicationrenovation.com, whatever URL you wanna go to, it gets you to the same place. The PDF that I review in those YouTube videos is just the PDF that gets printed from the application service. That is not what medical schools receive. Medical schools receive every single piece of data. They can slice and dice and chop and sort however they want. It is important to remember that schools the admissions committees at these schools can do whatever they want. So yes, if you have 20 hours of a post back like the student in Michigan was able to show, the schools can say, great, we're going to completely ignore your undergraduate GPA and we're just going to focus on your post back GPA. Other schools may go, nope, that's not, that's not good enough for us. We used to talk about the 32-hour rule. If you go Google 32-hour rule, old pre-meds podcast, that was a long time ago. There were several schools, and there, there probably still are schools, that publicly had a 32-hour rule that said, hey, we'll kind of reset your GPA with 32 hours of post back work. The question here being asked is, how many credits am I going to need to show academic ability? Leading off with six complex, uh, medically complex kids, a job, a husband, whatever, that to me is a distraction to the main question. Remember that context is very important. I'm the biggest believer in your story matters. And you have to show academic ability before you can get to that point of look at everything I've done on top of all of this context, you have to show that academic ability first. So go to mapped.com, M-A-P-P-D.com. Sign up for a, a free Mapped account. Remember, Mapped is free. Mapped is free. Mapped Pro includes 
access to our expert advisors. Instead of paying several hundred dollars to, to talk to them, you can talk to them very inexpensively. $90 a, a year is what we have it set at right now as I'm recording this. Get three months for free using the referral code old premeds. Mapped Pro will give you access to chat advising with our expert advisors. Remember, you can track your GPA, track your MCAT scores, track your activities, track, uh, start working on your, your applications, track your applications. We have a, a application tracker now. All of that is free, forever free. So go sign up. We also are launching, as this episode is coming out, uh, a new feature called My LORs, where historically we've said, go to Interfolio, sign up for an account, start requesting letters, let Interfolio hold them. Mapped. Mapped is doing that now. We're, we're starting to launch it here uh, relatively soon. We're going to have it for the next application cycle. We've been meeting with the application services. We, we've been building it. We're getting ready to start uh, showing it to some students and having them kind of bang on it uh, as beta testers. But go to mylors.com, M-Y-L-O-R-S with an S, dot com. That'll redirect you to a page where you can sign up to learn more about it. But if you sign up for the free three-month trial of Mapped Pro, remember it'll transfer into regular old free Mapped forever. After that free trial, uh, you'll be able to start playing with my LORs as well. Go there for this student and for every other student who has a very complex kind of nuanced uh, process. Go check out Mapped. Use the, the free trial of Mapped Pro to ask our experts questions specific to your situation. I hope that helps. Uh, it's great what you're doing with six medically complex kids, a job, a spouse, life, whatever. Remember that first and foremost, you have to show academic ability. And after that, you'll be able to tell your story and give context to everything else. Hope that was helpful. Don't forget two things. Check out MAPPED, M-A-P-P-D, Use the referral code OLDPREMEDS for three free, three free three month trial of Mapped Pro. And check out Blueprint MCAT, our sponsor here on the Old Premeds podcast, for their amazing study planner tool. So you can figure out what you're going to have to do to plan that schedule. As a non traditional student, it's even more important because you have so many other responsibilities. We have a great week. It's good to be back. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.